my name is Milani, and I've been with uh, Living Miracles Monastery since April, so it's been almost nine months. Uh, my exposure to the Course in Miracles happened four years ago. So, you know, four years of Course in Miracles, I, uh, I met David and the Messengers just over a year and three months ago in California. They came out for a little mini tour and we hopped around the Bay Area with them mm -hmm. and were immediately very, very impressed. Uh, just felt like uh, a, a very strong resonance with the whole community, all the messengers and David in particular. And, and Tara had actually seen them on the internet, seen the website two years prior. Mm -hmm. and. At the time, she says, you know, we're going to hook up with this group at some point. She and we never, that. we never listened or never tuned into anything happening with them mm -hmm. until a friend of ours said, hey, David is in town okay. this coming weekend. So that's kind of unfolded that way. So, okay. Yeah. So I want to ask people, like, why they come to this community or what they find important here, what is helpful about being here. And I understand that right now you have an issue with illness and... So I guess I want to hear, how is it different being in community to have illness here? Like, how do you handle it differently? Or how is being around the people here helpful to you? Well, it's, uh, I would say the, you know, my wife and I really immersed ourselves in the course four years ago. And we were like daily readers of it for four years really, really immersed in it. And when we met David and the Messengers, it just felt like, you know, these are people that are really, this is a community that's really applying the Course in Miracles in their life. Uh, not just intellectualizing and discussion, discussing it, but they're actually, they're, there's a practice involved here. So we were very interested in, in that. Uh, and so when we arrived here, we just immersed ourselves. Uh, in the practices that they have ongoing, like the no people pleasing, no private thoughts are the are the key uh, practices here, and they they run very 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 deep. So uh, yeah, we've just really immersed in that. And in your question about the illness I have right now, yeah, it's it's a it's a matter of the you know we're we're pra we're doing mind training here, and mind training it's not. Uh, it's where we're returning our attention from a horizontal orientation. In other words, I have an illness that can be seen as a horizontal orientation. I have a body, you know, it's identification with a body in form. And, you know, the mind training teaches us to, to extend that vertical, that I'm not a body, that it's impossible for my mind to have attack thoughts. And therefore, illness is impossible. So what do you so, do if you wake up one day and you feel crummy? I mean, from whatever's going on, what do you do with that then? It's really no different than anything we do in community because you're going to have uh, objections come to a lot of things in community. And those objections in relation to the community are, are just being flushed up. Uh, because if we carry the, the strong purpose that the, the community is dedicated to of uh, bringing these thoughts to truth, then you're, you're actually inviting all that stuff in. So this illness, in my mind, I, had, I, I was so thankful, because I really haven't had a whole lot of stuff to really work with since I've been here. It didn't seem like. Wow. And I, I merged right in. I've been really, really happy and joyous the whole time being here. And just having so many uh, kindred beings who are on a, a same path, is, is is really awesome. Uh, so this illness, when it came in, I, I looked at it as an opportunity. Wow. And I said, okay. And I actually called Suzanne. I said, Suzanne, I struck a gold mine. I'm ready to go deep with this because, you know, illness such as I have, just sort of a cold, flu and cold, has been such a chronic, long-time thing. I had so much of that when I was a child, so it just brought up all of these thoughts and feelings from childhood and all through my adult uh, ages. 
and really, so it's, it's you know, the practice here, it's not about over, you know, overstepping where you're at. So it's not by, by saying, uh, oh, I'm just, I'm not my body and just bypassing the cold. It's like working through the feelings and the thoughts that are attached to those feelings because they're really, really deep-seated. And so it's, it's, it has been a gold mine for me. You know, I've, I've uncovered so much stuff. And, you know, just practicing the guidance of the, of the course and uh, having one-on-ones with some of the messengers here has been very, very helpful just to keep me, keep me really centered and true to what my purpose is here. So. Okay, so with that illness, though, like, if you were at home and had an illness and you're, of course, a miracle student, What's the difference between being at home and having that illness and being here in community and having that illness? Like, how is it helpful to deal with this illness by being in community? What happens here that wouldn't happen at home? You have all the, all the mighty companions around you and how that, help, that help you, uh, help, helps to keep your mind focused. You don't have any false empathy going on here. You know, people are, are seeing you in, in your truth. And that so mean? the illness playing out is not your truth. Right. You know, it's, it's just not the truth of who I am. It's impossible that I'm ill. So they help remind you of that? Is that what you mean? That's the oh, yeah. that they'll point it out to? They'll point it out. And you just, you know, the, vi the, the vibe that's cast here. I mean, you see people going through stuff all the time in community. But it's going through it in, in order to raise it up. And everybody is in supportive of that. So it doesn't matter if I'm in illness or I'm, I'm crying because of sadness or emotions coming up, or if I'm deliriously happy. You know, it's it's all the same practice. Uh, yeah. And how would you describe the process of lifting it up? Like, what is that? What is it to lift it up? For me, it's it's. It's remembering the purpose of why I'm here, why I was captivated by the Course in Miracles, Jesus' teaching. Uh, whenever I get caught in something seeming horizontal, so to turn, to turn my attention back to the purpose of why I'm here, and it's, it's to engage in a peaceful state of mind. That's your purpose in That's being here? That's my purpose, yeah. yeah. Because that's who I am in, in truth, and I know that in, in truth, you know, I just feel that. You know, I, I have a stillness in my mind that I really like to cultivate. I, I'm, I'm, I'm determined to cultivate, and I know in that stillness is my my lasting joy. Mm -hmm. So, so being in community really supports that. And so, whenever something happens, then it's it's like. Uh, it's like doing any kind of exercise. You're resistant at first, and you do it a few times. But the more you do it, the more accustomed you get. So by turning my attention time and time again back to the orientation of my purpose, of, of finding the peace in mind and, and joy in my heart, then that's, that's the exercise that I'm, that I'm here to do. That's great. OK. Um, yeah, so I love your metaphor about exercise. Yeah. Cause that's great. That works for me. I actually often use the Pilates exercise because Pilates, you're trying to rediscover muscles that you don't really know about. Mm. And that's so apropos with, with the work that we're doing here with the mind. Because our mind is so habitually ingrained in horizontal thinking, uh, being a body in a world. And so to train ourselves, we have to find that muscle that the Holy Spirit guides us to towards exercising back. To, to the truthful thoughts. What I keep hearing from people is that being in community accelerates this process, accelerates this growth. Um, is that your experience, and, and how does it do that? Absolutely. Uh, I don't know how it does it. It's got to be the collaboration that's involved in community and everybody being on task in, in, the, in the purpose. Uh, it, uh, as an example, expression sessions that we have in community, 
you often get, you know, you know, four to eight people expressing in, in a session. So every time that that's going on, uh, there's only one mind. So all of that expression is being filtered through my own sense of preference and aversions and all the stuff that that ego mind likes to grab a hold of. So I'm exercising that attention back to my purpose time and time again when people are speaking. I get a, a, a great uh, experience of practicing, uh, uh, you know, not people pleasing. And of course, the expression session is all about no private thoughts, but also about practicing uh, no false empathy. So you really hold people in the truth, regardless of what the situation is that they seem to be going through in their mind. So that sounds, or for me, it seems difficult. Isn't that difficult when someone's crying about something? Don't you end up sort of feeling sorry for their earth situation? It's an option, but it but it doesn't bring you peace. So if if we hold if if I hold myself towards the purpose of why I'm here then I'm always, I'm constantly exercising back to that sense of peace in my mind and joy in my heart. So literally then when someone is crying, you'll think this is not who you are, you are... That's it, that's right. It's impossible. It really is impossible. What's impossible? That they, could, they, that they can be sad and sorrowful. You know, it's, it's really not true, not truly who they are. It's just the ego mind has, has got them caught and, and convinced that something else is going on in the storyline. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you feel that you and the people at the table who are doing the, who are holding the space for the person who is expressing, does that help them become more vertical also? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah this, is, this is what the speed up is all about. Okay. Yeah, because we only buy into our stories if other people go into false empathy with our story. And then we start to start to believe that it's actually true. So when nobody's believing you in your story, it doesn't have any place to land. You know, so the reflection coming back to you is, you know, that's you're you're a perfectly joyful, loving being. Right. And it just yeah. fizzles up their egoic yeah. idea that yeah. Yeah. a small story. Yeah. I mean it, it seems like a lot of stuff is going on. It's, it's really being raised up to the light. It's really reiterated a lot in the Course. And Jesus. Do, do you consciously do that? Do you say, Jesus, take this idea? Or do you say, Holy Spirit, help this person or help us all see it differently? Are, are you uh, saying those kind of prayers in your head while the person is expressing? I do that often, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm turning my attention to the Holy Spirit because I don't really know my way out of this illusion and it takes a guide you know and it takes those people in community who who have gone before you or have experiences that they've gone through that they've raised up and so they become examples but primarily it's turning my attention to the Holy Spirit and said okay help me help me lift this up you know whenever I feel like I'm engaged with the story whether it's my own or someone else's I I just, I just know, I don't know the way out of this. So I turn to the Holy Spirit and say, you know, help me, help me clear my mind on this and bring me back to that sense of peace. And are you able to hear, you know, I know some people say they can clearly hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Other people sort of just feel it. What is your experience of the Holy Spirit? I would say I mostly, mostly feel it. I don't really hear. I have heard have in the past. Yeah. Uh, but right now it's more of a feeling sense and it's more of uh, kind of keeping my compass on that, uh, that, that peace within myself as, as my guide. Mm. So when you feel peaceful and good about an action you're about to take or a word you're going to say, that is your experience of the Holy Spirit? Yeah, that's, that's tricky too though because ego mind wants to hijack everything. So, I think it's mostly a stillness in my mind that really brings me to a state of peace. 
So do you meditate quite often? I know that you know, in community we do that three or four times a day. Is yeah. that what you're doing here? Yeah, we, we meditate three times a day, and you know, I meditate more than that. How much do you meditate? Well, probably in total, probably a couple hours a day. Yeah. And what, what are you doing when you're meditating? Are you trying to clear your mind? Are you praying? You know, what are you doing inside your head when you're <laughs> meditating? <laughs> I'm inviting in stillness and then watching the egoic thoughts come to interfere with that. And, you know, I don't, it never feels good to push against or try to control those thoughts. So I just kind of watch them. And while my attention is on that stillness, and those thoughts just pass like, like clouds going by. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's my practice in meditation. And over time, it just gets more and more and more skill. Okay, and I also want to ask about mystical experiences. I hear that phrase, I don't think I have any, or maybe I have every now and again, but what is your experience with mystical experiences? Well, David keeps saying that, you know, the, the end result of community with this kind of an intention is, you know, we're going for um, more telepathic communion with one another and so I think that's the, been the greatest mystical stuff I've had is, is a lot of, of telepathic stuff starting to happen more and more like picking up a phone and the person already calling you know it's you know, before I dial it's happened four or five times in the last week it's, you know, so it's, it seems to be amping up and you know people being on the same wavelengths with you know, thoughts and ideas and you think that happens more now than it did when you were, you know, living on your own or living inside this community? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because the whole purpose here supports that. Mm 